Welcome to Drinkin' and Drivin'. Here at Drinkin' and Drivin', we'd like to remind you that drinking is fun and driving is fun. Just don't do them together. Have fun and be safe. Here's your host, Joe Yarbrough, and his co-host, David Tartaro. Welcome to Drinkin' and Drivin'. This is Joe Yarbrough. I'm here with David Tartaro. Hello. Ron Rake. How you doing? And I'm going to mess this one up really bad. Laura Sasaninajad. Wow, enough. that was <laughs> <laughs> What's the right way? Sasaninajad. I, w- no, I said it perfect. Yeah, I, I, I would have got it right. I, I think maybe she said it wrong Sasanin- and I was saying it right. <laughs> Laura. We'll just go with Laura. <laughs> no, I mean, that's probably what that's I'm going to go with. That's the name I prefer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a coincidence. I also prefer to call you by your first name. Um, so right now, right now, we're sitting here at Playa Linda. Or Playa Linda for my Hispanic listeners, my family, your wife, mostly. my <laughs> wife, exactly. We're at the Bricks Project. That's Pretty fifty-two beach. twenty South Washington, Titusville, Florida three two seven nine zero. Come in and drink many beers, but always be responsible. You can find them Playa Linda Brewing Company dot com on Facebook. They are Playa Linda Brew Co. and Twitter. They are Playa Linda Beers. We're sitting here at an amazing looking location. I'm. Literally, I, I can't even say a stone's throw. I mean, I can spit that far from Don't huge. Don't spit. You're, you're an uh, arm's uh, length yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll just go with arm's we'll length. We'll say arm's length away yeah, from, from uh, some magic happening. We've got some fermenters right here. How long has this location actually been open? Uh, we've been here uh, three years now. Three years. And, and this how, is obviously second location. Second yeah, location. Yeah, we started uh, down at uh, what we call a hardware store. Which is right down the road, uh, 305 South Washington, just as a shameless plug. But we started down there five years ago as a smaller tasting room and realized that uh, we could keep up with production for those tap handles. But up here at Bricks is more of a production style brewery. It's a 30 barrel, four vessel system that allows us to do production and get distribution out into the state of Florida. Not to mention a killer food menu as well. Yeah, we have a kitchen, a full kitchen attached. Uh, we have a smaller kitchen at the uh, other location. But here we have a full kitchen where we can do different stuff. And we've done uh, beer dinners and a little bit of everything out of this location. Cool. Beer dinners. Yes. Mm. We'll start with the name, Playa Linda. Why, why are you named Playa Linda? The connection to the beach was the big thing. I've never been really a fan of those uh, brewery names that are just the city, insert city name here, brewing company. But we we really felt strong about the the beach name and not restricting us too much. In Spanish, it means beautiful beach, and there's just a connection. It's one of the last national park beaches. There's no development out there. It's uh, truly a beautiful beach experience to go out there and, and take it in. It's quiet. It's rustic. It, it's uh, it's a state park, so it just has a good clean feel to it. Nice. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Central Florida area, we're we're also very close to where the space shuttle, well, I guess, no longer the shuttles, but all the all the rockets go up and all that stuff. So we're amazingly close space in both it. locations. Would you say this is a great place to watch a launch? Yeah, you can do it right here at the brewery, the uh, the NASA complex, and uh, where Blue Origin and SpaceX and all the subcontractors, which is even bigger than I think than the than the big names, uh, all the yeah, uh, yeah. subcontractors are out there. Yeah, we're right across the river from it, and you can see it pretty much anywhere in Titusville. But yeah, you can run across the street from either brewery and see it up close, live kind of thing. Yeah, nice clear view from from this building. Yeah, you see the VAB right there. Yeah, it's easy to walk out back of the brewery or outside, just outside the tasting room, and get a ringside seat to witness it and feel it. And that's That's what I think a lot of people need to experience it. Is watching it's one thing; you can do that on YouTube, but to feel Feeling that it. percussion and to feel those I can feel the percussion go. now. Is that one? No, it's that, actually that's a train. the train. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a rocket. <laughs> we call it a choo-choo. Oh, a choo-choo. Uh, but yeah, it's a choo-choo the going by. The choo-choo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when you get that sonic boom, it's nothing oh like that. Oh my gosh, yeah, nothing it's like crazy. that. It's crazy. It's like a tiny earthquake. And with, uh, with the SpaceX ones, we can visually, on a clear day, we can see the engines come back when they do the, wow, the really? landings. You can yeah. see those the, are so the cool. burns That's and see them drop in. I've never seen that that way where the i know you people can't see where i'm pointing but it's, it's, it's a little south. bit south of us yeah yeah well it's, it's kind of funny he, he just mentioned the vab so we're right here you know on us1 so you can clearly see the vehicle assembly building from Crossing here river, which is yeah. it's a giant building i mean it's it's huge we were driving not too long ago my my son at the time he was four he's five now and he was looking across the river while we were driving on us1 and he goes 
Daddy, why is that building following us? Because it's so big, it kind of looks like it's going with you. And he, <laughs> I just, just the right I, I, I just love that. He, it, and it did. It, I, I looked over. I was like, it does kind of look like it's following us. It's like, why is that building following us? A giant American building. It is. It, you can see it. You know? it's, a, it's a massive structure. Uh, it actually, side story, but it actually rains inside of it when the humidity's right and the weather's right. It rains inside of there. It's a weather such a system. I've heard that. System, a big uh, building. It's got its own weather patterns I'm, in it. I heard, I don't know if it's true, that it's su- supposedly the, the largest one story building in the world. Yes, that is true. Yeah. yeah. I, I got to go into it one time, actually. You remember the Eris rocket, which they never ended up launching? launching uh they were building no. it <laughs> it was awesome man uh it was like right after this shuttle ended it was supposed to take kind of take over i got to see the rocket in the building while they were putting it together and it's neat because they have all these you know different tiers that go all the way up and, and they have a flag hanging from each section with whatever reached that height so you'd see a shuttle you'd see like uh you know all these different rockets going all the way up the atlas and stuff and when you look at the scale of one to the next it's pretty crazy. I mean, the, the variety of vehicles that we've launched. That obviously, the Saturn is like just absolutely insane in size. Really, yeah, it'll super follow cool, you. man. I mean, it'll follow you from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say this building's pretty it's big. big. I mean, building. I would say this brewery may have some weather issues itself. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. It's if it's, pretty big. Building, I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if it started raining in here as well. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, this one's pretty. I mean, and these kind of look like rockets. I mean, it's the I, VAB I, of beer. There's got to be. We got to work on it. Yeah, there's the got to be something. A, the, the ABV. ABV. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, you guys should have another beer. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So this location has been here for three years. How long has the brewery itself been operable? I guess is the right word. In business. In, in business. Uh, three years. <laughs> the, the building goes back way back. It used to be a. Uh, Originally, it was a gas station out front, and this is 50, 60 years ago. Some of the wood that we have in the tasting room was reclaimed from the original building behind the bar and on the, some of the sub walls and the tables in the, in the tasting room area were built from that 60, 50, 60 year old. It's Florida yellow pine. Nice. And it's, uh, it's real tight grooved. It's not that modern stuff that. That burns down real quick. No, I'm joking. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's that older, older, old growth uh, is the word I was looking for, pine. But we reclaimed a lot of that and uh, and some of the black cypress that's up on the top we call the clouds. But we tried to reclaim and reuse as much as we could. Wow. So you said this was originally a gas station. So how long before you guys got it, how long was it empty or do you know? It sat for a while. It actually, after being a gas station, it became a, uh, a lumber yard. And we actually still have... One of the other structures that we now use for office space uh, next door to us. Uh, and then at one time it was a concrete plant where they made the molds of the wow. grandma's bird's fountain out front kind of stuff. And the big eagle that's con- made of concrete, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. And there's, we've had a couple of guests come in that said, yeah, I used to work there when it was that concrete oh, plant. Wow. Oh, that's wow. That's cool. So it's kind of neat to see the, to see that. And then after that, it was uh, our uh, business partners uh, is Barnlight Electric. And they did all their lighting manufacturing here at one point. So they oh, outgrew wow. it and moved to another building. Oh, this building actually was where they would put their stuff. They're actually doing their stuff here. Yep. And they did all their uh, lighting manufacturing. And they shipped those all over the world. Uh, barnlightelectric.com. <laughs> <laughs> so and those are, are those are most of these interesting fixtures. You guys like, have all, all kinds of, of cool yeah, fixtures. All, yeah. all of these light fixtures inside, yeah. Really? Some, some of them other, are vintage. Some yeah. of their antique uh, collectors are like the ones above us here in the in the brewery. We call it the brewer's table. We're out here. But they do the one in the booth there. There's six over there that are antiques yeah, uh, yeah, that are that's, all the same color. I was looking at that earlier. Have a neat look to them. So, that's what, like this fixture down here on the wall. With the two reverse... Uh, yeah, a little steampunk look to it. Yeah. Really cool. So where we're sitting now, was this outside of the original building or is this part of the original building where we're at now this is part of the original building okay and but it ends at the end so, here. so it ended just a little bit further that yeah. way yep okay, and we've gotcha. actually the brewery when we came in here to add uh, physical space we added on another structure on the back side gotcha it's where we do the cooler for the finished product going out and a malt room huge uh, malt storage and you mentioned you you know we talked about this a little bit before the show started why did you go with the bigger system you mentioned you had a you have a smaller one over at the hardware, then you talked about maybe a 20, and now you decided to go up to 30. What was the the driving force behind that? We started with a three and a half barrel in downtown Titusville, which we knew we could get us into the business and get us going, get us started. But I knew with my experience over time that that we would outgrow that. But it just works at that location. We were kind of in a 
uh, facility that where we couldn't go any bigger. It just uh, the dimensions of that place it's physically not large. Yeah, enough. it's just uh, to uh, and actually have guests and right <laughs> and have uh, people spending money there. So we had to go with a smaller system where we knew we'd have to go into production somewhere else to get beer into distribution. So that's the uh, the birth of this. And we were looking toying with a smaller system than a thirty barrel, but the reality of of getting open and getting running, 30 barrel made more sense to us to not have to upgrade again. And we knew we'd be undersized. We knew there was going to be a lot of issues with getting that going. But I really, uh, back then, I really felt strong about let's get it. Let's get the bigger system. We're not going to have to move. We're not going to have to change locations. I've been doing this too long. I'm not moving again. <laughs> I'm not going to move this equipment ever again. Let's set it up, make it work. And, no half measures. And here we are three years later still working on it. So it's it's, Beautiful. it's growing. It's ever evolving. Things are moving around. The tanks behind you are uh, an addition. We're, you know, we're always doing stuff to make it grow and make it bigger and make it better. And you do have room to grow. I mean, there's a whole back area right now that's just pretty much just storage. And you can put more tanks back there if you had to. Um, so what, one, what do you do for a living again? What do I do for well, right, <laughs> right, right now? That this is what I do for a living. <laughs> well, it doesn't make a he living, runs his mouth. I living. run my mouth for a living. <laughs> so uh, one thing I was wondering, just because you do have you know multiple locations, and you said this is for distribution, is it? Uh, I've talked to a couple of people. So some one location they did only one type of beer, and the other one they did other beer. Do you make? Both? Do you make stuff at both locations? Do you do? How do you do that? Yes, we do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a little bit of both. We experiment, and usually uh, my uh, SOP in general is if I'm trying to do something new, or if Laura comes up with an idea, we'll try it on a very small scale. If it's blending, or if it's uh, treating kegs or something, we'll do it on a very small scale at the other brewery, and eventually grow it up if it makes sense and it works, and we dial it in. The last thing I want to do is make 60 kegs of something that we're not dialed in on yeah. and have it sit or have it not go the way we expected it. So it's always under that premise, and we have to do it that way. It just makes more sense. Sure. Um, but in general, here at Bricks, we try to do more production than experimenting. But inevitably, for instance, right now in a tank, we have a beer that's going to Disney that's uh, that's – pretty much an experiment but i've kind of got it dialed in i feel and we're gonna be doing it it's uh we've done it in the past but we're always tweaking stuff sure. and but this one is basically a sherbert beer their name for it is uh i always have to look at my legal counsel here but it's a it's a hashtag name it's hashtag rainbow glitter dream ale wow rainbow glitter dream ale. magical <laughs> so, but, it's not a glitter beer is but it? an easy way to say it is it's a sherbert there you go. So it took a lot of trips to grocery stores buying different sherberts to see what what is sherbert. You want to get that Sherbet. flavor right, yeah. Well, however you Sorbet. want to say it. Yeah. Um, but to take <laughs> it apart and break it down and analyze it and try to make it uh, the way they want it kind of thing, it's tricky to reverse engineer a finished glass back into oh, its yeah. elements. And, and that's what took so long to do. But that's one of the things that... We're doing here, and they're going to buy the whole batch, what? and it'll go out. So it's pretty much only going to be available there. Well, you'll be able to get it in the tap room here. You'll be, uh, yeah, okay. you'll have it here, but you won't find it at Anywhere. any of our other do you, locations do you, that we distribute. Well, will they have so. it? Will they have it in cans there? Is that what they're doing? Or no, they're just kegs? be draft. Okay, cool. Do you have to do you have to call it something different when you serve it from the tap room here? Um, since it's like a since they own it, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, because hashtag Rainbow Dream Glitter, whatever it's called, <laughs> it won't fit on the tap handle. <laughs> or on the menu. So it'll be Sherbert. You have to use hashtag like Sherbert. Right <laughs> you have to now, use an entire piece of lumber as the tap handle <laughs> to get the name on there. That'd look cool. It would look cool. Yeah. I've done that. <laughs> You've done that. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I, I kind of want to know what that's like now. <laughs> I, I'm I'm honestly I'm just trying to like. You know what the problem with that, that with the problem with that would be the weight of the tap handle would open the it would just would open the on. faucet. No. <laughs> I mean, is that a problem? I mean, I guess it's a problem for them, but not if <laughs> yeah. I not if I just happen to be there catching what was dripping <laughs> into my mouth. I mean, you know, always doing my part to help out. That's right. <laughs> but nice. uh, uh, as an account in general, Disney's been great for us. We've uh, we've done a lot of beer. We do all their race beers whenever they do a marathon. 
and you get the beer at the end of the race kind of thing. Those have they, got huge shoe, those, those Disney marathons. Yep, and we've dialed stuff in to where they, when they theme the race, that we theme the beer to the race. Wow, so it's, that's uh, cool. It's been good. It's, that's you know, a great relationship to have. So I know Princess what, Run, I think, is the tricky one because it's a tricky beer. How do you make a beer taste princess, like a princess, princess run? beer? <laughs> sweaty? Long story. We, so I know there's uh, other... There's other f- <laughs> sweet and sweaty. <laughs> sweet and sweaty. I know there's other it's Florida... Florida breweries that uh, that brew beer for Disney. So how does that work? Is it like uh, they just can contract out to whoever they want? It's not like an, there's no exclusive exclusivity to that at all. Disney Nothing. Disney's huge. They can do whatever the heck they want. Yeah, but you know how beer is the beer world. It seems like everything's contract based, no, and you're stuck no, with this no and stuck with that. Contracts or anything like that. It's just it's a handshake. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know. That's nice. Do they reach out we to you guys? We have a good guys? relationship with them. Yeah, I mean, originally. Um, like how that how that come to be to be. Well, they want to go to the source. They want to get good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, they heard Ron's beer is really did, good. Did like did like Mickey Mouse come in? Yeah, I, Mickey I, showed up. What, we haven't had was, Mickey show up. It was up a magical yet, time. No, we did. Uh, I want to say we did one for him, and they were happy with it. And uh, it was cl- it was a good clean beer, and it worked. And yeah. I'd, uh, I've always tried to focus my beers on not being overly bitter and and very. Um, in general, crowd pleasing, especially yeah. here with a restaurant, you've got you can't have beers that are sticky or over the top. Some we do over the top, but in general, our core beers are very focused, yeah. where they're not something that that just someone's going to be offended by. You can, it, you may not be an IPA head, but I think my IPA you can approach and and drink and enjoy and it's try something else, yeah. and you're not going to get your palate's not going to get stepped on, and you can have another beer after that. Hopefully another IPA, but uh, but you can't have something we um, like our key lime beer is a huge seller for us. It tastes like liquid key lime pie. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's just one of those things that works. But like I said, anyway. Uh, but Disney was real happy with that first one we did, and we've just built that relationship. And that's that's the that's the name of the beer game is uh, building relationships. You can have the the best juice in the world, but if you don't have those relationships and those. Uh, contacts and you you're dead in the water it don't mean nothing yeah yeah that makes sense and, and how long have you been playing the beer game oh this is i don't know if you've got the shows long enough for this but uh <laughs> i started homebrewing um like most people in the beer business about 30 years ago and just as a hobby and now it's uh, just my hobby gone mad and um uh, it's like early 90s but got yeah and the that wasn't 30 years late, ago. That was only 10 years ago. How dare you? Late 80s. Um, late 80s. Started playing with it and uh, was doing research at UCF and laser and optics and uh, and physics and uh, computer engineering stuff and just got connected to this whole concept of, of what makes a beer what it is. I couldn't afford it. As I always say, my wallet hated it, but uh, my taste buds loved it. <laughs> um, but I was always intrigued about what made that glass the way it is, what made that brewery make that beer the way it is, and to look at something like Warval, which is a famous Trappist beer. Yeah, yeah. But to, when you have your first one, you know, how in the heck uh, – I don't want – didn't want to cuss, but <laughs> how in the hell, how in the, do, fuck, how in the fuck did they make that? <laughs> what made them do that? What makes someone drink that? And then you have your second one a couple of weeks later, and you go, "This is pretty good." I wonder how you know how to do this. And then yeah. it's like, "How could I develop my own and make my own Orval. style beer that would be my signature kind of thing?" But that was always intriguing to me. But going to the history and the culture and what makes that brewery survive a you know a thousand years in the beer business by doing a very simple brand Orval. They don't do multiple brands; they do yeah. two. And that's it. That's all you get. But to evolve that and make that go, that's what intrigued me. So when I was doing research and stuff back when back when I had a DARPA mail email address was to find out water profiles and get into the history of beer and culture that made, you know, lambics the way they are. I mean, everybody remembers their first lambic and then they go back to it and <laughs> so kind of 10 thing. years later when they decide to try it again. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, what makes it that way and just to evolve that history of, of, uh, what makes it the way it is and get into it. And that's what really intrigued me. It wasn't the computers and the lasers and the, and the crystals at work. It was the, it was the beer that I was drinking and the beer that I was brewing. It sounds like you should have been a yeah. chemistry major back I, then. <laughs> tell my dad that <laughs> He's, he was fitting the bill for the, uh, for the college stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I was always intrigued by that. So it got me into uh, 
home brewing on a crazy scale and basically operated a nano brewery out of my apartment and had a lot of alcoholic friends that enjoyed what I was doing. And, uh, and I just kept brewing and was intrigued by it, got into the business, um, and then did consulting with premier stainless, um, uh, long story short, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 30 years. I mean, that, that beats mine. I mean, you saw my, you saw my Mr. My Mr. My Mr. Beer kid 11 years ago on Christmas. That's, that's, that's how I started into beer. Hey, I, I can't, I can't, I still. That's have, why, that's why you don't own a brewery, Joe. That's why I don't own a brewery. But you know what I do own? I own a computer and a couple of microphones, much, much cheaper. Much also, cheaper. I think much more suited for you too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the beer's not going to listen to me if I just run my mouth all day. So it's 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 good that I it's good that I do this. I mean, people don't want to listen to me when I run my mouth all day, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> but I've always been connected to the the whole experience of what makes that beer the way it is, and someone drinking it. I could sit at a bar, any bar, and just watch people order stuff and just wonder and try to figure out what makes them do that is it the neon on the wall is it the tap handle the the name of the beer is it this there's so many aspects that go into it that i've tried to analyze and try to figure out um but i've always come back to the idea of the experience it's that it's that guest it's that customer coming in from the when they drive onto the lot you know the the, the you know the, the lot's clean the the windows are clean, the, that kind of thing of bringing them in and they're greeted. The customer relations is there. Everything's uh, Everything about the experience is yeah, there totally. from the food and everything else. Uh, at one point um, years ago, I worked for the Petrakis family that did, that built Ravenous Pig. And, and they have a long um, James Beard history in the, in the dining world. But to watch them operate and watch them run a restaurant, it really made me appreciate what happens in a restaurant and how to make sure that customer, when they leave, that they're coming back. Yeah, yeah. And they're not walking away pissed off and they're not uh, blogging about it and writing up about it yeah. and, and putting lore to work to <laughs> dig ourselves out of a hole. But, Running interference here. <laughs> but if we do it right, we don't have to deal with that. And it, it's it's an ongoing thing and you can't make everybody happy. But, uh, you know, as long as we try and make sure that that – that that bartender that's working today is as good as the bartender that was working yesterday and they know about the beers and they can talk and smile once in a while and make people happy. That's what it's about. I, I so think the, as long as that happens, that experience is there. And that's what I've always been focused on is that. I think I like that you even, you said it and I didn't even think about it, but you said the parking lot. I mean, even that's, that's literally the first thing you see when you get to the place is the parking sure, lot. Yeah. I mean, I was at a place, I don't want to throw any, people under the bus because they're good people but their parking lot is atrocious their parking situation is atrocious and before you even get in there you're already like kind of frustrated to to begin with you know and then you get in there i mean you know everything was good the beer was good but yeah but yeah but but like you said and i i remember just thinking this was not too long ago i was there and i was like this parking lot is a pain like like one way it's like it's one way till you get to here then it's somehow the other way so it's it's really really weird parking situation and it is a bit frustrating. So you get in there and that I mean that could just be the beginning. You know, if the beer for some reason wasn't quite on point, well then you you know kind of. Well, you want to you want to you want your customer to start out at the highest level possible. Yeah. And if they're already in a bad mood from the parking situation, that's not a good. Yeah. Thing. So I, I like that you hit on the, the parking lot was it's literally that- the first thing. So from beginning to end, I mean even the bathrooms here. They're clean. They're funny. I mean, you got you, you've got the 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 kegs. This is at, the first. This know. is the first brewery we've done where I actually took a photo in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the same. It, it's one of the highest funny, photographed uh, social media things. Is those it's no way really? Keg Whose journals. idea was that? Uh, I I don't pat myself on the back too often, but um, <laughs> you had something to do with yeah. it. <laughs> People love the signs outside the bathroom too. I don't know if you guys saw oh, that. No, I, I, I did. Notice. I saw the bottle and the wine yeah. glass. Yeah, I saw that. No, you gotta, a, you're going to have to go look. There's a lot of little detail things that I appreciate. I've been to so many breweries where it's a tasting room and it's the stock, nothing against anybody. It's a stock standard drop ceiling and, and the shitty sound system. I, keep doing that You're but, uh, you a poor allowed. sound it's, system it's, and, you know what you have to be 21 to drink so and they're playing nothing. air supply and they're playing this music that you just supply. go what in the hell am i why who who's behind this why why am i sitting here right now because that 
lends itself to that experience. For sure, about, yeah. Even if it. the beer is fantastic, you know, it takes away from the experience. Yeah. I feel like I ta- I'm going to take back my chemistry thing I said. I feel like maybe you should have been a social science major. <laughs> I love social oh, science. Everything you've been saying, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. That's so But true. I always relate it back to other places I've been to where I walk in the door and go, I'm not. I'm not coming back here again. I don't yeah. care how good the beer is. Yeah, I yeah. could probably get it somewhere else if I really wanted it. Yeah, yeah. But there's nothing that says come back and 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 uh, and sit for a couple hours and spend some money. Well, it's like live music versus you know looking up music and listening to it online or whatever. You know, you go to a live show. One of my favorite bands is the Pixies. I don't know if you know the Pixies or not. Uh, and I saw them. Heaven. They, they're mm-hmm. awesome. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. I saw them live uh, earlier in the year and and. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't that they were bad, but it's the, the experience wasn't what I was hoping it would be. And I've been to a lot of live shows, and you can have an amazing experience at a live concert. And it's it's no different when you're at a brewery. You know, you're you're not really just there for the beer. You want to go and have fun and socialize and enjoy yourself. And there's so many things that can take away from it. Like so, if it's loud and you can't hear the other right. person. I mean, yeah, we've had a lot of hurdles when we were building bricks out. Um, the acoustics aren't the greatest, and we've toyed with uh, with acoustic stuff in here to keep it from uh, as being as echoey as it is in there. Um, oh, customers are probably going to go with, yeah. uh, complain about that a lot, but uh, <laughs> once in a while we hear about that. But it's uh, it's a tricky thing. But we did uh, think about when we were building this out to change it up so you weren't at hardware store in South. Uh, which, yeah, it's got to be different. That it was different. So, different. The, so the yeah. lighting's different. The music's mm-hmm. different. Uh, the the experience is a little different from a hardware store, but we still have people that go. Oh, I like going to a hardware store, but my husband likes bricks. Yeah, and yeah, the vice yeah. versa. So we which is kind of good. End up going back you have, and forth, now. You but, know, you have variety that you're offering people, not just in the beer, but in literally the experience. Yeah, yep. and they can make an experience of going to both locations and not feel like it's so cookie cutter going from one to the other. Totally. Even the tap lists are different. The menus are different. I mean, everything. Really, except for like the Chive TV is probably the only thing that's like really the same. Yeah. Them. So even though they're related, they're they're like siblings more than anything. They're not the same yeah, siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? They're not twins. Exactly. Not twins. Do, do you guys, the two of you guys, jump back and forth between? They're the not two twins either. On? No, we're not twins. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? That's yeah, both locations back and forth. You know, sometimes multiple times a day. You know, just they're about what five miles apart from each other. So. Yeah. It's pretty easy to kind of go from one. To and the vehicle assembly building chases you the whole way yeah. back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> the view is not bad. You know, yeah, driving yeah. down US 1, it is a beautiful view to see the VAB and the river and stuff. So. Well, traffic probably doesn't get too horrible. I'm not. I'm Sometimes not you hit a red light, and that's rough. So. <laughs> How dare they you have put to a red sit light there, there and wait and everything? I was born and raised in Orlando and lived down by UCF. And when we were building. When we started building a hardware store, driving out here every day, it was the traffic, UCF area traffic just started ramping up. And, I know all about and, it, man. Uh, three, three and a half, four years ago, my uh, wife and kids and I moved out here, and it was just such a, like a burden removed from us, just not having to air. sit in traffic. So whenever someone says, like, oh, traffic in Orlando is right now, like, yeah, here there's like six cars in an intersection. It's all backed up. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. What 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 year was it when you guys opened the hardware store? Um, it was five and a half years ago. Oh, when you you moved here I, right when it opened. Yeah. Numbers yeah. are hard. So <laughs> I know I'm terrible. I with remember the I don't five even know why half, I asked. Honestly, it was, uh, <laughs> it was like in the nineties. I don't know. <laughs> in the nineties or something. Sometimes, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we is, just had our five-year the anniversary man. there in November. So ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So just over five years. Yeah. yeah. Now I see why you keep her around. She's she's yeah. good with the numbers. <laughs> she's she's she's, got, live, she's on point with the numbers. You dates. Live near Al- dates. <laughs> you said you live near Alafaya Trail. That yeah, right. That area gets UCF so and, uh, awful, man. Dean and Lake Underhill. Oh, I used to live right on at Dean and Lake Underhill. Well, no, I was at Dean and Fifty. I was close. R- River yeah, Park. We were neighbors. Stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I moved from over here. At- from that area as well. Oh, no way. Yeah, I'm, it was, I actually agree. like Dean's. It's kind of, kind of nice area within that. We lived on 419, which was just like, it was a total cluster to get anywhere. And so yeah. moving out here was. Uh, Everyone get so. your maps out. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you know what's going on here. <laughs> I, you know, I want to complain no, I, so but, bad about but so you know many, the thing But is Titusville's because, but wonderful. <laughs> different, it's a different beautiful episode. area. It's got, you know, the space, the beer, obviously. So it's great. I do like the fact that, and I really feel like when you guys opened your first location, it, it was sort of one of the starting points to, you know, bring culture back to the area. Because Titusville, it's always been a decline. 
And yeah. I feel like now it's like uh, the plateau and maybe going it back. It is. The Renaissance. Uh, uh, pretty awesome. What? Uh, my favorite story of when we were under construction, I was there late night doing plumbing and and tying stuff together. But this uh, this one uh, this one lady came to the door and knocked and, and I gave her the, you know, the fingers across the throat were not open. Not not that you're dead. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to kill you. Open. He said, go away or I will <laughs> cut you. We're not <laughs> That's open. what he said. <laughs> but she continued to knock and... Uh, I opened the door and she goes, I need to pay my power bill. <laughs> what? And I just, sorry, ma'am, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And then she said, well, the hardware store, I used to pay my power bill. Or I need to pay my power bill. And I was like, you were probably paying the wrong person, but uh, we, <laughs> we, we do not do that here. And we're not open. And I don't know what to tell you. And, what the heck? So he and, took uh, her money and sent her on her yeah. way. <laughs> the, the hardware store used to be able to pay your power bill? I didn't, didn't question it. Because that location uh, historically was <laughs> like the hardware store for downtown. So yeah, all, yeah. The, all the fixtures and cabinetry are from the original hardware store. Wow. <laughs> and I funny. didn't argue with her. I just said I... Apologize, ma'am. You're going to have to go somewhere else. But it was really an interesting interaction of we're not even open for business yet, not for the day or for not at even all. at all. And I'm getting this already. I'm in for a long haul here. But I'm guessing that was the only time anyone ever tried to pay their power bill at, at the brewery. No, we, that I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we have. So since the since the locations are so different, they have their own ambiance, they have their own everything, uh, do they have, uh, you know, each person likes their own stuff, do they each have their own kind of bestseller or is it uh, the same across the board, the, the beer that would be like the number one beer to get at both of them? We try to keep uh, some of the cores on, our blonde, red, and our IPA. Um, I should probably say that better. Pleasure chest. Pleasure chest and our Robonaut red. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> um, our, our cores that we do uh, distribution uh, throughout the state and then uh, as well, those are on tap at both locations. Um, because they are, I feel they're solid beers and they work really well and they're food friendly and they're not over the top. Uh, we keep those around and there's some other newer cores like our Herd Mentality uh, Milk Stout. Tropical and Wonderland. Tropical Wonderland and uh, any others. I think that's all but we course. try to keep those on at both locations because I feel good about them uh, being solid beers and and unique in their own way and and they just work. But intermittently we'll mix up different stuff and do blendings and different uh, beers out of each location. So you have to go to one or the other location to get them, and it's not cookie cutter like you just said. Same thing across the board, two locations, uh, McDonald's style. Yeah, yeah. So nothing but the against cores are probably the best McDonald's. sellers yeah. overall. Diff- different type of yeah. locations. What's, what would the, uh, the number one, your, your biggest, baddest, best seller there? The um, pleasure chest. Bad, that's a tricky word, our baddest seller. Like Michael Jackson, like <laughs> our, bad. Uh, Good bad. Shimon. Our, uh, our blonde, <laughs> uh, uh, the Originally, uh, we called it Bottomless Blonde, named it after the beach, but our blonde, uh, blonde Ale is our biggest seller. It's the easiest. Um, wow, really? It uh, sells better than Pleasure drinking. Chest? It's very food friendly, and uh, it just works. Um, yeah, we sell a lot of that. And uh, and then right behind that is uh, is the IPA and the red. And, uh, yeah. Robonaut's a great beer. That's what I, I, I really like Robonaut. Yeah. right around there. That's, that's I don't, I'm not a numbers guy, so I don't know the exact percentages, but blonde by far is what we brew the most yeah. of. And you, you did mention, and I, I do want to go back to that, named after the beach, uh, and you are also named Playa Linda, but there is something that Playa Linda Beach is, I don't know if it's world famous, Florida famous, Central Florida famous. Um, what, what's uh, Playa Linda Beach famous for? Well, Pier 13 is the last uh, stop as you're going out um, the beach road, and, uh, and it's known for being a nude beach. Um, I've never personally, I've never been out there. Um, but I hear it's uh, um, awkward. <laughs> it, is it awkward, Dave? Uh, oh, it's quite <laughs> awkward. No, I, I, I actually have never been to any of the Playa Linda beaches or the beach. It's. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying. I think I already mentioned it. It's a, it's a it's an amazing beach. The don't be afraid to go out there and think there's just going to be a bunch of naked people out there. The the first twelve piers uh, uh, entrance. Um, clothing required our clothing required and they're run by the by the uh, state officials and that sort of thing but it's uh yeah the last one i'd be nervous if you see that number 13 
and uh, don't feel comfortable like, around don't bring your uh, kids oh wow there's plenty of parking here let's go to this one guys <laughs> surprisingly that's the one that where there's like the least amount of parking like if you the further you go up the beach road it's like cars are parked on the side of the road 12 like, is i bet you 12 is the busiest because those are the people who are like no nah, i don't want to go to 13 but they're like but i kind of want to park at 12 is there like, like, a, a, is there like, like a binocular like... store right in front of 12 <laughs> no. so people who won't go to 13 they'll at least look at 13 <laughs> but it is a beautiful beach it, it's you know a national seashore so there's no development it's That's beautiful nice. there's a lot of uh like sky watching like night sky watching and stuff like that out there a lot yeah, of night launches the... to watch out there yeah yeah Sorry. everybody, everybody <laughs> you can actually uh... see a launch pad like when you go and out to the beach i mean it's right there you're oh that really close yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I went to it was a day launch but i went to uh the jetty not super long ago and that was pretty awesome especially when you watch when you watch the rockets return it, that that's surreal like it looks fake i mean i saw it with my own eyes i was like that didn't really happen because like and it's slow. It is it, man. It almost, the first the first time I ever saw it. that, I was like, "What the heck am I watching it, it, right now?" It doesn't make sense because it looks rock, like somebody's just playing this, it in reverse. Yes, yeah, it's, it's super it's, weird. It's, yeah, it's uh, it is crazy, and the idea that um, that Elon and uh, those other um, um, guys out there want to do it every week to think that that happens. It's, is that what they're saying? Yeah, that's. I nuts. mean, they're doing they're doing them. St- Right now, at a breakneck pace. I mean, I've never seen them moving. Even just one this not when not when it was well, on NASA. It, it got launches. rescheduled. I was just gonna look it up. I think I saw SpaceX was moving. It was supposed to be today or tomorrow. Yeah. I knew it was coming up. Yeah. But the, Are you sure that rubble wasn't a rocket? It was a train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, so it's in your backyard. You don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. So but you, yeah, we play pay homage to them. We name some of the beers after them, and we've got. Uh, one of our bigger, uh, better ones is um, is Starliner, is a all Simcoe hop uh, lager that we've done, and Boeing caught word of that, and they're big fans of it, and they've actually bought kegs for their private events. Oh and wow! Stuff. Wow, yeah. really? And it's uh, it's a big to do. And really cool. We hope to have some bigger news about that coming down the pike eventually as well. So we're we're working on uh, artwork for a for a twelve ounce can label for it. And, oh, nice! And trying to eventually get that going all these things take time and that's sure. the, the tricky side of the business that most i'm guessing most of your listeners uh all what 20 of them no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> i think no, I'm, but, i think i'm up to like 50 i mean uh, I'm, I'm getting there no but i think it's all, most of them are family i have a large family so yeah, yeah. Right. i think it's those behind the scene things that nobody thinks about that goes into um running this yeah. and making it happen is you can't do it I couldn't do it by myself. I could have all these great ideas, but to make something happen and put it in uh, the can that Dave's holding in his hand, to do that, it you just there's not enough time in the day, and Photoshop can only do so much. Well, I saw Laura when you on don't even know Photoshop, Photoshop earlier. That, yeah. <laughs> you don't even that know I can Photoshop. sketch it on a napkin in a crayon, uh-huh. and and then Laura kind of translates it into something that our artist takes from there, and. Uh, it you know it takes a village kind of thing. Well, they got uh, for people listening. They, if you ever come in here, they have crowlers. Which if you don't know what a crowler is, you should at least know what a growler is. It's basically a half growler. It's thirty two ounces. It's a can, and they can just fill it on the spot and can it for you. You can take it home, so you get draft beer at home. But they have the, these full wraps around each one, and they're awesome. It's it's we're, artwork. It's That's artwork. It we were just talking I mean, about I uh, the word art on purpose. We're yeah. just we're just talking about. Uh, um, the the beach was it pier 13 is that mm-hmm. what they uh so they've got this full wrap it's like a boardwalk going around and uh there's like a bikini and like a uh, swim trunks just hanging over the side it's pretty freaking cool man yeah, have we, you guys have you guys done a full wrap of I mean, uh, of what, a so space related one single. yeah every one we do yeah. is pretty much uh we have one generic one for the generic beers if that makes sense <laughs> um but the uh but for each one of the brands we try to do the artwork and make sure that and most breweries just have a generic crowler that they just fill up and scribble with a sharpie yeah. what it is. Exactly. But we yeah. tried to really go the extra step to where it's you that whole experience. You that. get the date on it, but you uh, you actually awesome. have a branded can for for taking home. Oh, there you go. So the Robonaut's got a whole space. Oh, the Robonaut theme. looks cool. That is awesome. Yeah. So all of our our brands have full wrap cans. Um, so it is like a process to develop them, but obviously it's kind of neat for the can to be able to tell a story about the beer and our brands that are out in distribution and six packs, which are the Robonaut Red Ale and the Pleasure Chest IPA also have the full wrap. So you could go to Total Wine or ABC or wherever and, and get a six pack and 
and take a look at the artwork because um, it's cool. I love the Robonaut has the fermenter rocket. That's like my favorite. That is really detail. cool. I did, yeah, I did mention awesome. they look like rockets. I mean, and then the keg satellites so. are kind of cool too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah so I didn't even it. there's a lot of little details and that go into you know everything that we do here at Playland. Whether it's the tap room, the beer, the in the food items, and then also you know the labels on the cans. So. Again, going back yeah. to that experience. And I've never been a fan of the single face, as they call it, for a, for a brand. Like you pick up any, almost any can out there, and they have the face. Yeah, where yeah. This right. has it's, it's the, you the keep whole rotating thing is it, a face. rotating it. You can go it, yeah. anywhere with it and totally. see it anywhere. And while you're drinking it, you can just honestly just look at it and not just enjoy the beer, but enjoy the can. Well, it's like getting a, it's, it's like getting a be. record, you know, and having the insert and versus just it's, listening. It, yeah, to it's, it online. it's hitting all your senses here. Smell, Literally, taste. Yeah. I mean, hearing it when you open it. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. Yeah, all, 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 of, all of your senses, you got, you got it. <laughs> but there are just a lot of fun details. Except the your cans, sense of irony. So. You can hear the ocean. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the ocean if you put it <laughs> oh, up to your ear. It's amazing. <laughs> Unless it's full, then you just get a wet ear. <laughs> <laughs> ocean sounds weird. That does not sound good. <laughs> but I mean, you know, when you go to like, a, 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 if you go to Total Wine or even Publix or wherever you get beer, and you, you're, you know, you're like, I want to try something new, and you see this, you know, all the different options. I mean, Pretty much everybody's going to say, well, I'm looking for a flavor, so I'll look for that style. But then it's you got to go off the labels. That's it. Unless it's something you've heard of or know about, you're like, what looks the coolest? It makes such a huge difference, I feel like, yeah. yep. having, I've always having said, that great artwork. I've always said you could have the best beer in the world, but if it's not marketed correctly, yeah, it who's, doesn't who's mean choo- Who's going to choose it? Doesn't no one's, no one's going to try it, so they won't even know. But hopefully when they choose it from the artwork, exactly. they're going to go back to it because of the juice. It's step it? one. Exactly. I, yeah, yeah. I do. Have, I do have to say, every time I hear the word Crowler, I think of Mr. Crowley, and that song always pops into my head. Every time Wait, someone says, song? "What do you, it's Mr. Crowley?" Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath? Yeah. Ozzy, Ozzy oh, oh, Mr. Crowley. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that that's every time I hear the word Crowler, that pops into my head, and it can't. So you should, every every time we've been talking about this, you should get out more often. <laughs> I, I, hang, I hang with my wife and a five year old. Yeah, pretty much all the time. You tell me today is like my five year old's my best friend. <laughs> he really is my sad, best Joe. friend. I don't really even like my I kids. I think it's great, but you know, whatever. I'm a party animal. Me and my five year old, we just we go fishing. That's about it. You just run so, away from giant to, buildings all day. Listen to Black Sabbath. Uh, ex- well, there you go. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to raise him right. Who doesn't? <laughs> no, my my son's one of my son's favorite songs is Iron Man. <laughs> Black Sabbath. <laughs> That's awesome. He loves that song. <laughs> so we've got some beers. I see a lot of barrels and things back here, like actual wooden barrels. So. What are some cool little, I don't want to say secret beers. We'll say secret beers. Something that's not out to the public right now, but it's in the works. We got anything like that? Uh, we've got a couple of barrels that we're aging Saison in. I've got a live fermentation Saison in an old wine barrel uh, that I got years ago. There's some other um, other ones back in there that we're aging Lambics in and doing active fermentation in, with Lambic uh, cultures and stuff like that. Uh, the biggest... The majority of them are for uh, whiskey go big, uh, aging, and uh, there's a eight. I just did inventory, so eight, <laughs> ten, say nine uh, <laughs> barrels the back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, is go big what you uh, have poured over here? Yeah, go big is our is our um, imperial stout, and then we do um, some of it in whiskey barrels, and I use different uh, distilleries barrels to get the flavors that i'm looking for because each have one's going to have a big, a, you see feel a diff, big difference between each. oh yeah every oh, barrel is gotta, unique and wow. even if you even from the same distillery. same distillery the each each one is usually a different part of the tree there's so much that goes into it that you're going to get oh, different flavors of that. And, and different aromas out of it so so do you blend them all together at the end so that way you have a consistent flavor yes <laughs> yeah, we sample. Or, or do you a single barrel like uh, like the actual distillery? Yeah, <laughs> we sample. Uh, we sample them before we do the blending and and make sure and uh, we'll use different volumes of different uh, barrels to achieve the flavor that I'm looking for. Because some are That's cool. some have will have a unique umami character and a soy sauce almost character to oh, it. Oh, weird. Because um, I prefer an extended aging over a quick aging. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just depends on the barrel, depends on the time, the temperature. And you don't really know till, into it. You, don't, you don't really know how it's going to be until you taste it, I guess, huh? Yeah. Maybe you have a general idea. And, that's and we it. just did one. We still have it on tap, but it was uh, we got a hold of uh, an Elijah Craig 
a ten year barrel. So they Elijah Craig aged a whiskey in there ten years. Yeah, emptied it. We got a hold of it and put our go big in there, and it just turned out amazing. So we have that on tap, and we did some bottling of that. And, right now, uh, you have that just on tap? for the holidays. We did that, but um, well, actually, right here. There's oh, no place like Playa Linda for the oh, holidays. Great. So this is um, a fifteen percent imperial stout. Wow. With eight months of aging in an Elijah Craig barrel. Aaron's got one. Aaron's, nice. Aaron's here from uh, Fat Drum sitting in the background, by the way. No, no. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so uh, the, the barrel was wet when we put the beer liquid into it. So it probably gained a little bit of percentage out of it. I, I refuse to measure stuff like that because it is what it is. I'm not going to do anything to change it. But you, you get those big chocolate coffee oh, notes, yeah. but there's no chocolate or coffee in it. And that real nice whiskey flavor. Oh my God. And it's, it's super clean so and that super clean whiskey flavor. And I just, we fell in love with this barrel early on when we filled it and just connected to it. And that's, uh, so eight months later, we, we, we kept it separate. We didn't do any blending of it. This is just the single barrel. So by the way, this one that we're, that we're sipping on, we, we purposefully uh, had them pull some out, I don't know, 45 minutes ago, maybe. Maybe even longer than that. Maybe even yeah. longer than that now. So we we had them pull it out quite a while ago just to see kind of as the temperature rose. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drink all of this now. I'm gonna save it till we get some that's not you know kind get of get a little bit do of do a little the, side by the side. Cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. You just want more of it, I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is also true. I, I would be lying if <laughs> you know it's if I like. Said a, that wasn't I wonder truth. if this is like the soy sauce thing you were talking about, but there's kind yeah. of like a little bit of a savory flavor mm-hmm. to the that profile. Isn't it great? It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. Now, some people find it ob- ob- uh, objectionable that they don't because uh, it's got that soy note in there, but it's it's just indicative of long term aging. And yeah. it's, uh, well, it's not like it tastes like soy sauce. So that would be gross. <laughs> it's it's like a, a it's more subtle. Like wish to share if I was at. Yeah, it's a complexity. <laughs> it's a complexity. Yeah, it's, yes, uh, it's, it adds it's very to complex. It. It's so good. You, you just want General Tso's chicken right now, is all. I mean, I wouldn't say no. This would go great with that. <laughs> I haven't had breakfast, so General yeah, Tso's chicken. And careful, because this will oh, fuck gosh. you up. <laughs> it, I, can, I can definitely agree with that sentiment right there. So This is a nightcap right here. This is what I want to drink. Oh, my I, God. I think, I think that's probably going to come home with me today. I love it. My favorite thing about uh, aged stouts is it's actually less the flavor and more the aroma. I, I can just stick my nose in a glass and just breathe it for, for an hour. But it's really weird when it's someone it's else's glass so and you good. do that. It's just like, like, no, that's like, smart like, actually. Doing, man? Like, <laughs> Joe, if you, if you make a habit out of it, you'll get a lot of beer from other no, people. You, just you know it. what? You keep it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it just smells so good. It's amazing. I'm not going to keep any open glassware around you. <laughs> that, 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 that's, a, that's a good move. Everybody's glasses are right in front of me all of a sudden. What are you, what are you doing, man? Obviously, other than your own beer, because you can't say your own beer for this answer, who is another brewery? They can be local or they can be just another brewery anywhere in the world that you, you're like, man, those guys, they're doing some good stuff. Who, who's a good brewery? that you can think of or or even a specific beer made by somebody else you could you could go there as well hmm uh the name of the brewery escapes me the one in colorado um god this that narrows it down so <laughs> many uh, I know, the, uh, <laughs> great divide i, I, love I, great I believe it's montana linda <laughs> montana, montana linda, linda. <laughs> that, that, that uh, means beautiful mountain that's right <laughs> caught me off guard I knew that. Uh, oh man I, um, I, I gave him a head scratcher why don't, you get, why don't you answer first, Laura? What about you, Laura? While he's thinking. She's like, I don't I'm know what to oh, I'm that, trying to help That's her synergy mentally. right there. <laughs> They're sharing a brain. She's like staring into his eyes, passing <laughs> thoughts to him <laughs> like, somehow. I feel like I could help a little bit. It's in Fort Collins. Uh, Fort Collins Brewery. It'll hit me. Let's say New Belgium's out in Fort Collins, right? Yeah, is that where they're at? New Belgium is Fort Collins. Yeah, that's, I thought so. Yeah, I, I've been I've been there once. I went to New Belgium before I was really into craft beer, and they did a flight, and I was like, "All these things are beer. Like, wh- how is this all beer?" That was like, <laughs> that was one of my earlier like steps into that's craft funny. beer. I, I ended up going there because I have different. a friend who lived there. That's where I had my first sour. I was like, "This is that's exactly what this beer is. It's very sour." <laughs> I'm a I'm a big fan of fresh beer. So so anytime I can get something fresh, if I'm traveling. There's a good number of breweries in Tampa. Yeah, I'd really uh, like to hit those guys up soon. But the ones that were most influential on me, sure, 
that name escapes me. <laughs> I was trying to look. I was trying <laughs> to look up Fort Collins breweries, but yeah, uh, there's Co- there's no uh, wife or uh, like I can just. I mean, the only one that's really jumping to me is like Fort Collins Brewing Company. Yeah. But. Like the uh, Major Tom that they'd have. Yeah. That. You know, Major we'll, Tom, like we'll, the song. we'll yeah. circle back. We'll, we'll circle back to that one during the other segment. Do you have any in your in your brain right now, Laura? I, For I know me, you're a, Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi password. So yeah. I love a brew that I like has always been really really close to me. Is a brewery that I went to a lot when I just started drinking, and it's in Virginia and Salem, and it's called Parkway Brewing Company. Okay, and I love what they do. I love their beer. I love the atmosphere of the brewery. But I'd have to say, like, a bigger brand that when I go to the store, I'm, I always check out what they have is I love Founders. I've been a huge fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad like, you said that. That is like a I brewery. Have, I had a scotch ale the other day. They have oh such God. a consistent product. Like, yeah, everything yeah. they make is delicious. I love their IPA. I love their session IPA. I love the breakfast out. I love KBS. Like, I love. You know, I agree, but the but centennial, like all their beers, you amazing. Can't use, so. You can't use them as your answer because Why? they're not a craft brewery. Oh, you know that about that? Beer, the Brewers Association. Uh, I mean, she can do what drives she wants. Me crazy. I mean, oh, I'm just, I'm she's just, a grown up human I'm just being. Up, Let her do I'm it. just bringing up something that you're I love left hand because really they're still a brewery. Out of they are, and they still make craft beer. It's, it's. The, I, I think volume should have absolutely nothing to do with whether or not you're. So you're telling her she's wrong. That's right. That's your favorite. Because they got, they got. Your favorite? Yeah. It's not. They your got favorite. bought up. They <laughs> got bought up by you. like Modelo or something like that. I think it was like a yeah. I, was I think it was Modelo. That, which but uh, stinks, they're but. Uh, there. I agree though, man. They're from Michigan. My wife's from Detroit. I know. They were one and, of the. Uh, I've been to Founders before and like just seen the production in the tap room. Oh, you've been to their big. I haven't been to their main. They have a small Grand one Rapids, that they opened yeah. in uh, that they opened in Detroit. I went to the one in awesome. Grand Rapids. It was great. It was awesome. I went to the Michigan Winter Beer Fest and I went there. Oh, and that man, was that sounds a, awesome. Yeah, that was nice. a great experience. Yeah, I would say Dirty Bastard is one of my favorite all time yeah, favorite beers. All their stuff. Their Scotch Ale, so good. Super super. Can't good. go wrong with good answer. <laughs> so, what's our favorite gas station beer? I, I, I honestly, I don't drink them. I I know time and a place. But yeah. but that time and place the, doesn't exist. Back for you. in the day, maybe. But I've never once I once I shut that down. I never I never went back, and I can't. Even if it's the only thing to drink, I'll drink water. I'm not. I just don't. That's not me. But the the one the one brewery that you asked me a, you asked a minute ago what um, biggest influence is Odell's in in Fort Collins. Oh, Odell's very very know. smart growth. Very. <laughs> focused growth just business wise just did everything just lit so many light bulbs in my head on how to do things and how to do it right but just everything they do to me is just solid and they're so smart about what they do that i was like that's the model that i'm shooting for did you live in that area for a little bit or something no. or you just been, you visited there uh, i would say if you like beer i, I feel like colorado is probably a good spot to head to man i went to great american beer festival one year and i spent just a couple days in denver and every brewery i went to i had so much fun prost brewing was a great one they're all german beers and then uh um, i went to great divide which was such a fun tour there was this one called uh oh, what are they called um the uh the theme is like uh, uh you're like me. johnny cash you're like me i am i'm being like you it's a <laughs> <laughs> uh, a black shirt brewing company. Oh, okay. Have you cool. been there before? No, that sounds neat though. Really weird. So they're called Black Shirt. It's like a Johnny Cash theme, and every beer that they have is red. All of them. It's like a red stout, a red this, red that. I just, it was so unique. It was such a cool place, and it was experience, right? It was such a unique, two super different experience. They had a cool thing. I think you guys, somebody should steal this. Uh, they had shirts for sale, and I Let bought. Me get my it. pen. You should get. <laughs> she's got one right here. Yeah, I'm they right. uh they oh, they sold right you know they sold shirts like everybody. But when I I just bought one of their shirts, and they give you this card, and the card says you know thank you for purchasing a shirt. You've been secretly added to our uh, you know Brewers Club or something. And now every time you wear your shirt, you come in, you get access to our secret tap in the back that nobody has access to. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's a great. And idea. they don't advertise that you get that when you buy a shirt. It's like, oh, if you just buy a shirt. This is a cool secret benefit yet. I thought that was neat. But it, back to the whole, you know, experience thing. It, it just made them such a memorable brewery for me. What's their parking situation like? <laughs> <laughs> park, you know, it was so good that I don't even remember the parking situation. That's how good the brewery was. <laughs> well, I think we're going to take a break here. Just we've we've kind of hit a, a few good things. If anyone has any things they want to talk about, we can talk about that while we're holding beer in our hand. 
think that's a good idea, Joe. All right. Well, we'll be back soon. And now it's time to drink a beer. All right. We're back. We're going to drink beer. And as a special treat, I mean, a huge treat, it's a, it's a spread. We also have food to pair with it. I've got a mountain of Irish nachos in front of me. I mean, it, it's literally a mountain. I can see the, the snowy caps on top and everything. Might be the biggest mountain in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's that's the garbage dump uh, right <laughs> yeah. off of 95. But <laughs> or Mount Dora. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Mount Dora. There you go. <laughs> so we've got some – these are called the Irish nachos. And what makes them Irish is they're actually uh, in-house potatoes. So – Instead of your, your corn tortilla, they're actually potatoes. And we grow the potatoes out back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, right, on the, right on the railroad tracks. Wow. I 10% believed you. <laughs> and, then we, and then we've got some uh, pork rinds, or do we call them chicharrones? Pork rinds. Uh, pork rinds. Okay, to southern. Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't want to step on anybody's toe. Not that far south, but just okay. southern. <laughs> I would say that is the south. <laughs> and then we've got these peppers. I, I want I want to know more about these peppers that are kind of down the way. What, what's the deal with those? Uh, these are um, uh, fried shishito peppers. Uh, they're deep fried uh, real quick. They harvest like w- once or twice a year, but there is a gamble in them that about every 20 or so. I don't know the exact number. There is a hot one in there. Not over the top hot, but there is normally they're just about the flavor. It's a real mild pepper flavor, uh, like a green pepper kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the probably on this dish there's gonna be one that's that's got a little heat to it. It's a Russian roulette. Yeah, uh, I, I was thinking the exact same thing, <laughs> like a gastro gastro roulette. gamble. Yeah, gastro gamble. Gastro gambling. I like it. We'll, we'll go there. And then we've got something at the very end of the table. It resembles hot wings. What is that? Uh, they're hot wings, but they're good for you. They're made of cauliflower. It's a deep fried uh, cauliflower, uh, buffalo style, served with uh, blue cheese and Ka- uh, and uh, and a uh, mild buffalo sauce. It's got a little wings. heat to it. Kali, Kali, Kali that, just, that just sounds like you killed a dog. <laughs> Lassie, <laughs> <laughs> so sad. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, eat these like like Dave over there. I'll, I'll crunch him, Dave. Yeah, trying not to crunch. So I mean, he, he clears his throat in the mic. He eats in the mic. I mean, just That's don't what the foam's for. Yeah, exactly. I, do, I do what I want. He's he's gonna use the foam as a napkin and wipe his beard. <laughs> That's not what I'm supposed to do here. We've got a couple of beers in front of us as well. I see a darker one and a not darker one. That's um, the worst that's description of any description. beer I've ever heard in my life. I mean, it's good for those who can definitely see this over the radio. Um, so what's this What's this uh, darker one we've got here? Uh, Robinot Red. This is one of our uh, core uh, core beers that I think pairs really well with, with pork rinds and, and the nachos with a little bit of uh, jalapeno heat there. Mm-hmm. But Robinot evolved as uh, there's not too many red beers on the market that are – that have a little hop character to it. There's uh, some caramel sweetness there. I just think it works. It's a good, clean style that not a lot of breweries offer, and uh, it's right at 5.2% ABV. Uh, it pairs really well with, uh, with with food, and it just it just works all around. We can this, so it's uh, available. You can take it, uh, take those cans out on the river, go kayaking uh, to the beach, that sort of thing. And uh, and just it's a, I just think it's a well rounded beer. It's, it's not too hoppy. It's super not easy too, to drink. Yeah, not too sweet, but it does have that hoppy sweetness in the finish. Yeah. And for the record, this is not my first time trying your beer, nor this beer. I've probably had quite a few gallons of these through my system over the years. But yeah, this is this is my if I'm buying a beer at like ABC or something, and it's going to be one of their beers. This is the one I normally Robin, go yeah, for. Yeah, um, that, that, that's favorite. my favorite one. I agree. Well, thanks. <laughs> no, no, thank you. And the, so these nachos are pretty fantastic. <laughs> they are. <laughs> the guy's got I've sour eaten, cream dripping from his face. I've, here. Eaten, <laughs> I've eaten more than everyone combined. I think so. But the the bacon is uh, it's super smoky. I like it a lot. Do you guys have like a particular place where you source the bacon from, or something like that? Uh, no. Oh. It's bacon. That's a pretty, pretty boring answer. All right. We actually killed the pig ourselves. I mean, you know, he's got – I did see a pig foot in the back. So you say he did kill the pig himself. I a, did a see a foot. It was, it, it was a foot. Yeah, we're, uh, on our charcuterie board, uh, we do some experimentation and we try to get different things in. We change that uh, item up. Um, I try to change it up regularly in the kitchen, but um, both – 
experimenting with a with a, a red wattle uh, pig down there, um, sourced out of the Carolinas. It was fattened up on uh, pears and uh, hickory nuts before uh, before its uh, demise wow. to uh, to aging. Um, but uh, we we salt cured it, and now it's under a wash of uh, local honey, lavender, coriander. Uh, pink Brazilian peppers or pink peppercorns and something else. So we did butter is the other sealing agent that we're uh, aging this out with. I can I, mean, I can promise you that this pig's life was much more boring before. So I would say not demise, but rebirth. His but rebirth. It's, it's coming a long <laughs> way, and uh, it's nice and salty. We sampled it before we washed it down, and uh, and it's it's coming along. And and how long are you going to age that out? And how or how long has it been aging out? And how long is it going to? I want to say it's been back there about eight months. Wow. Um, uh, well, well, I'm not sure. We're going to cut into it again uh, in a couple months and see where it's at. What was that date again? Let me put that on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun day to be here for. So yeah, shoot me an email. We'll probably work it into a work it into a beer dinner or a pairing event to have it and try to um, move a good portion of it there and then. Probably do some uh, for uh, charcuterie and have it available on the charcuterie board. Nice. That's so, Dave, awesome. now that you've been uh, shoveling food in your face for the last uh, ten minutes or so, mm-hmm. how how does that? How do the uh, pork rinds and the nachos there pair with the Robinot Red? It's a good balance, honestly. Like uh, you know, you get a nice little bite from the jalapenos, obviously, and then the pork rinds they serve it with a uh, hot sauce, and the Robinot Red kind of mellows out that bite. So it's nice you go back and forth between the two. It kind of keeps your palate nice and even. I like it. I like it a lot. Too. <laughs> that is that is David Totaro approved. Is this? Uh, do you guys put beer in the cheese sauce? Is yes, it made it with is a the beer, beer cheese? What's it? What beer is it made with? Playland of Blondale. Oh, the Blondale. Mm-hmm. It's really creamy. Super good. I approve. Uh, I was gonna say. I would say if anyone sitting at this table right now has the ability to approve this, it's the guy who's once again. Still shoveling food into his face, so not gonna it, stop. It, it makes for great radio. He's not asking as many questions as he normally yeah, does, though. So if I knew if I knew that's all I had to do to shut him up, I'd bring a candy bar or something. <laughs> Is it a beer candy bar? Sure. <laughs> I would love to describe the next one, but I have eighty eight hundred pounds of malt on a truck that just pulled. Is that in. what I just heard? The t- Yep, and I've got to unload that truck if uh, Mike's not here. So let me check on Mike real quick, okay. and uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. So we'll move on over here to you. So you you get to get in the hot seat. Now. Okay, yeah, hot seat. Let's bring it on. Don't mess up. Since, since I know this to be the we want this to be the worst part of the show. Uh, I I know you're familiar <laughs> with with the menu. Uh, what do you think about those cauliflower bites there? Honestly, they're one of my favorite things on really? the menu. Yeah. I, I haven't had any yet because they're way down there. Yeah, they are so good. Uh, they're definitely something I get when I'm looking for a um, snack here at the brewery. Uh, but yeah, they're big pieces of cauliflower. They're breaded and then lightly fried, topped with blue cheese crumbles and a little bit of hmm. green onion, served no. with some ranch. Now, Ron said these go really well with the IPA, right? Yeah, these go great um, with our pleasure chest. You know, just because the hops in an IPA, um, they really kind of complement the spicy notes in the buffalo cauliflower bite as well. I mean, that is that is very wing-like, honestly. I mean, that makes me think of eating some wings. Mm. I've, I've never tried to do anything like that with, with cauliflower And before. cauliflower it's is a awesome. nice meaty vegetable, too, so it's not like you're um, disappointed with the, mm-hmm. you know... Sustenance. Oh yeah, no, so, I agree. Yeah. Honestly, it's my probably my favorite vegetable. Yeah, cauliflower. I love it. Well, I mean, I've I've made the uh, the cauliflower rice before. You know, use that in, in lieu of yep. rice, and and that that's actually I don't need to have rice over that. Like to me, that's that is you know interchangeable with rice without yeah. any sort of issue there. And especially you know nowadays too, with so many people having different you know menu requirements and. We try to do our best to accommodate every type of diner. So we have vegan options, vegetarian options, gluten-free options. Um, we can make things keto for people. We try to be as you know accommodating as we can, and that's a popular one for the vegetarian. I'm looking at the peppers. That's where I'm going next with this. So I was told that these pair really, really well with this key lime slice that you've okay. got here. So you've had, I'm assuming, at least one of these key lime 
I've had at least but one at, of at the least one yeah. at some point. <laughs> one to five. I'm surprised they didn't put the Cool Whip on the rim for you guys on these. Oh, is that what you guys usually do? Yeah. Typically, when you come in the tap room and you get a key lime, it's going to be served in a Pilsner glass, and we have Cool Whip rim that we put on the glass, which cool is. Whip. Cool. Definitely um, one of our most Instagrammed photos that we have of people coming in to so, next, so next funny. to the cool bathroom. Next to the urinals. I, yeah. love, I, love hearing, <laughs> I love hearing the marketing perspective. Ooh, that's the most nice. Instagram. Yeah, perfect. it is. People love the beer, the key lime. It's our key lime slice ale. So if you take a sip, it's nice um, and sweet. This is, I mean, it does go well. Yeah, these peppers are awesome, too. They're good. It's got that nice char grill flavor to them. They, they got the char to them. They've got yeah. It looks like they just sprinkled some some spices, you know, including salt that really just like yeah. amplifies that pepper. What's that? What's that sauce? The it's a miso sauce. Mm. Like like as in miso soup. Yeah, and using a miso that you would use in you know miso soup. What right? is what is miso exactly? So it's actually fermented soybean paste, I believe it is. Oh, okay. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. So that's what's on top. But yeah. So they put that. <laughs> on, I mean. it's... <laughs> Whatever it is, it's delicious. And anything that they do where fermentation is probably just the coolest miracle of all because you get beer, you get you get your soy sauces, your some of the fish sauces. Kombucha if you're a hippie. Kombucha if you enjoy that stuff. You get cheese from a similar process. I mean, aging the, some of this meat that he's got in the back for the charcuterie. I mean, like I'm ex- I'm excited about that. Honestly, well, really fermentation am. is definitely cool. I mean, bread. Oh, yeah, that's kind oh, of an important one. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> also, if it wasn't for bread, you wouldn't be here. So there you go. <laughs> kind, of, kind of goes hand in hand with uh, the creation of beer. I've actually heard there was an argument that beer may actually have predated bread. Some people are saying just based on some ancient, maybe Egyptian. I yeah, I've sure. heard a lot about this. So, uh, yeah, they, they, you know, everyone thought, you know, beer kind of happened after they were making bread. They had, you know, whatever. They, but some people actually believe that it might be the opposite where they were – because you, know, you couldn't just drink water. Yeah. I mean, that's water. a long story. I actually did a presentation about fermentation and the history of fermentation. Oh, really? So, yeah, I know a little bit about it, but I don't know if that's something you want to get into. Anymore. That'll be more like my podcast. Oh, yeah. That's that's going to be like Dave's uh, yet-to-be-named podcast. No, it's named. It's the Beer History Podcast. We're going to start recording this month. I don't understand. The, the Beer, Beer History. History Podcast. The Beer History. Yeah. Speaking of what, so speaking you on a, do a, we'll do a fermentation episode. It's very interesting. I would, that would actually yeah. be really cool. Speaking of podcasts, so because I don't, I'm not really. Uh, this is super good. I'm sorry. Cool with my own <laughs> w- with my own voice. I'm looking for somebody with a really good voice to do the, the little intro and some of the things that I've been saying. I need somebody with a. Oh, you got to get the okay. micro machines guy. Is he alive still? <laughs> Everybody why loves would I, why would I want that guy? He speaks so fast you can't I know, understand. No, but what everybody he's loves him though. <laughs> I need that. I need that guy. Uh, do you remember? It was like a YouTube sensation a few years ago. This like homeless guy who was like, "Tune in the Family Guy at 5 p.m." He was like a voiceover guy who got kind of down homeless on his guy. I promise you, look it up. There was a a homeless no guy who about. was he was kind of down on his luck or whatever. So he's you know holding up the sign and he was doing like the you know tune in at 5 p.m. for your local weather and like he he had like that like the golden voice kind of thing so i need to find that guy <laughs> yeah, just I, you gotta find a hobo downtown, yeah. i know just, we have just, a lot of those just actually. pick up random drifters and see what their voice is like yeah that's not that's not creepy at all <laughs> yeah i will say specifically if we if we can get dave to just stop chewing for a second i'm just kidding is that good? <laughs> but but with the uh with this key lime i'm gonna say it's it's nice it's it's dessert like but it's not overpoweringly sweet. No, it's honestly, I would say it's more. I mean, it does have a sweeter flavor to it, but I would put it more in a sour category. Than yeah, anything. so it's definitely got like the tartness of the key limes because nice tartness. And Ron would say they tasted dozens of key lime pies from like Publix and everywhere trying to nail down this flavor when this beer was kind of brought to life. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you get like a little bit of tartness from the key lime and it's balanced out with by almost like this marshmallowy like, like graham cracker sweetness to remind yeah. you of like the crust of the pie. Um, and again, that just kind of goes to why we put the Cool Whip on the rim because again, how do you eat a key lime pie without a little bit of Cool Whip on top? So it's 
a very fun beer to drink and it's intended to be nostalgic for people, which is something that we do a lot with our kind of dessert type beers is we want to invoke those memories of like childhood um, or, you know, favorite dishes that you've had yeah, in yeah. your life. So our Cranberry Claws, which was our most recent seasonal beer that we had in distribution in the tap room for the holidays, is intended to be like an ambrosia. So oh, nice. And we actually oh. call it like your Nana's ambrosia. Wow. Um, cool, cool. So Is that all gone? It is all gone. Dang. Aaron, Aaron <laughs> was uh, from Fat Drum was raving about that. Yeah, episode. Cranberry oh. Claws is probably one of our most popular beers that we released during the year. Um, and that's, so again, you know, Ron really likes to tap into your senses and kind of hit it home when it comes to a beer that smells, tastes, and reminds you of something more than just this the is, beer in your glass. I mean, cool. this, yeah, this like is that. key lime pie. I mean, it is, it's, it is key lime pie. I mean, so. I, I can't, oh my, it smell. I mean, it smells like it tastes like, I mean, that's good. That's real good. So my mouth is just stuffed with nachos right now. <laughs> I know. You're, you're a disgusting human being. These are very good. <laughs> so can, talking of stuffing your mouth, but not like really stuffing your mouth um, and, you know, getting nostalgic with beer. So we like to do food pairing events as well, kind of to bring the two together. Um, you know, in the tap room, we want people to have their own experience as far as what they want to pair with the item that they're enjoying. But we do like to have, you know, certain events that give people guidelines or suggestions on how to pair beer. So yeah, yeah. we've done like the gingerbread and beer pairing um, at our hardware store location, which is really fun. And then we have one coming up on January 25th that is Girl Scout cookies. Oh, cool. Yeah. I like and that. craft beer. So that's really fun too. So we try to do fun events like that every once in Those a while. Are fun. We've done like donut and beer where we use the local tasty donuts. Um, and then here. Is that the one just, just north of here? Maybe yeah, a mile yeah. and a half? Yeah. Yeah. They've been around for a long time time so we like working with other local businesses for our anniversary we did a grilled cheese pairing so we had like little mini grilled cheeses paired with beers and then here at the bricks project we do beer dinners we try to do them a few times a year but it's you know getting uh, that on the schedule are those coming. like private events or yeah they're ticketed uh, events are private we're shut down to the public and we really try to make it a fun experience i think the best one that we've done so far was uh april fool's <laughs> beer dinner and so we had everything was they gave you tickets and gave you nothing no, in return. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your money, gotcha. sucker. <laughs> no, the menu was intended to be things that looked one way but tasted another. So so it looked like dessert, but it was savory or well, something like, like that? Well, we had or? one that was supposed to be scallops and bacon, but it was actually seaweed and mushrooms. And then we had um, like one that was supposed to be like a jalapeno popper, but it was like squash blossom. Oh, so, weird. Yeah. Huh. And done fun things like that. That was really fun. I think I just Ron got... made Jello beer for that event actually. So, what, what, so I think I, 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 think like I got the, the one it that it tasted like beer. twenty oh, peppers. Oh, oh. Was it gelatinous? It was Robinot Red that was Jello, and it hundred percent tasted like Robinot. It was very fun. I, how did you even it? figure out how to do that? Ron's back, by the way. Oh, yeah, Ron just returned. <laughs> Hi. Uh, it, it's weird being in a working brewery. How you have to get up and do brewery type stuff. Gosh. Kind of, kind like of inconvenient, honestly. But you know. beer just doesn't ferment itself, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> you you got to get it. That's all, like the one part. It all together. That's the one part where you don't actually have to do it, anything. You pitch it and you and it 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 bubbles. Yeah, it's so easy. <laughs> it was pretty good on the Mister Beer Kit. 11 years ago. <laughs> That's why you're still doing it, right? Yeah. Well, I down I downsized from a house to a townhouse, so all my stuff's sitting in a shed at my grandparents' house, just sitting there unloved. Maybe I'll go over to Dave's house and we'll brew something together. I'm down. Did you so, talk about key lime? I, yes. I, I can't stop talking about it. It's delicious. It, it's key lime pie. I mean... So it started... I don't know if Laura mentioned this. It started out as a soda. I was trying to do a, a lemon-lime soda. In a weird way, it came out tasting almost like key lime pie, but not really. So the challenge was, was all right, let's go to Publix, who makes the best key lime pie in general. And about four pies, four weeks later, it evolved into what you're drinking. And is this available year-round, or is this... Uh... We're, we're trying to do year-round, but inevitably it is one of our top sellers, and inevitably we do run out once in a while, and then Laura has to dig out social media from the from the pits to uh, recover us because uh, everybody complains that it's not on. 
But yeah, we try to keep it on year round. And uh, do you distribute this, or is this only available in house? We do on special occasions and for certain uh, accounts once in a while. But there is um, there is some issues with its production that make it very expensive, and there's not a lot of money in distribution of beers uh-huh. in general, um, and especially with this one with the inherent costs of making uh, key lime. And have you ever squeezed a key lime and run a little? We need a lot of little hands running the juicer for hours on end to make the key lime juice. I mean, I've done regular sized limes, but you know, key limes seems a lot of work. It seems uh, futile for someone like me. Was that was that original soda recipe with key limes? uh, No, it was uh, just generic. uh, Just say generic lemon lime. Yeah, yeah. But with a couple of tweaks and a couple of uh, um, hours on the juicer, yeah, it turned into. uh, we 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 knew it should be in a beer because yeah, it yeah. was that interesting and that unique. And there were a couple breweries doing key lime beers at the time, but to me, none of them tasted like key lime pie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from that perspective, they tasted like uh, lime beer. Yeah, but yeah. They weren't key lime pie. This is one hundred percent. You nailed key lime pie. Yeah. Like I, I don't. You could it's say even this get is the not creaminess beer, to it. Just, it's yeah. got everything. What, what's the ABV on this one? It's right about five percent. Oh. Is there is there oh. lactose in this? No. No. What do you? How do you get that creamy sweet flavor? I can't tell you. That's a secret. That's the secret. Part. <laughs> <laughs> tell me exactly. Write it down for yeah, me. As Publix for their recipe, and that's uh, no. I don't, so, no all, just, all, he did, uh, all he did is got vodka and put. Put vodka in some key lime in a blender no. and called it beer. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> easy. Yeah, it's, uh, just many, many tweaks and many uh, trials. And um, like I said before, the, there's uh, so many things are are born from experiments and and just trying something different and trying to approach it from a different angle and outside the box uh, approach to it and trying to see what we can do and and push those boundaries. Uh, one of the, one of, in my past working at um, Ravenous Pig and Cask and Larder, there were so many chefs that came through that staunched there, that worked there, that I learned so much from uh, about salt and about balance and about food and marinades and how things flavor and how to treat things differently and timing and everything else. It just had a big influence on how I look and approach different beers and brewing because they, when you watch a chef work, they do it and they do it out of nature. They do it kind of instinctively. But if you've never seen that before or watched, you could watch cooking shows all day long, but you're not seeing guys on the line cooking stuff exactly, and sweating into pans and, <laughs> and that sort of thing that influences everything. So watching that happen, it really had a big influence and in talking to them and watching them work as they're talking and, and that sort of thing. I mean, you started off playing with lasers and now you play with beer. Um, I, I feel like you probably made the right choice sticking with the beer. I'm going to have to agree with that. I still think the social science thing, though, you know, missed opportunity there. But yeah, I think that's in everybody, though. It's people watching. It's uh, yeah, it's watching what people what makes people happy, what makes them aggravated, kind of thing. And uh, and it's I think it's in everybody. Uh, I think I just look at it from a different perspective and a different um, uh, a different way to make things better. But yeah, you'll never make everybody happy. You feel like ask Laura, all my employees. <laughs> you feel like Laura's uh, helped a lot with. Uh, with oh, immensely, because yeah, it takes kind a, of picking those types. Of it takes out. a village to do that kind of stuff, and uh, and she's quick to react, and she's got a, a natural uh, good pat on the back for the new year kind of thing. But she's got a natural way of of approaching things that uh, just works works yeah. well with it for us. And uh, but yeah, it definitely helps. And I I do not have the time to do that kind of stuff. I remember one our one of our first meetings uh, talking about social media. I was like. You know, what do we, what do we need a website for? You know, do we really need a website? Do we really need um, postings every day? And why are we doing it this way? When it when it comes down to it, there's people that, I just saw your post. I'm coming in for that burger of the week or that, you know, I just, that picture looks amazing. And, yeah. And people talk about it all the time, uh, but it, it, it's truly one of those aspects of free advertising that you can't not do. No, definitely not in today's market. And, and I will say just with you know the social media and the, just the internet in general when i go to a new place i've never been to just just say i go to cleveland for some reason i go to cleveland it's a bad like, example the, the first thing i'm going to do is like where is the closest brewery where what type of breweries what's the beer scene like because i enjoy beer and i want to know what's going on so i will inevitably find what seems to be one of the better breweries or might be one of the bad ones that i'm gonna have to just 
you know, grin and bear it. But yeah, that's that's the first thing I do when I get to a new place. Like, hey, what's the beer scene like? Well, and to piggyback on that, I mean, you, you go on Google or whatever and you get a list of breweries. I tend to like to look at their actual websites when they have them because you can get so much, so much of a better picture of the feel of the place. Like, the, it's kind of yep. a little snapshot of the experience. Laura, let's redo the uh, website. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to pause for just a minute or two here and maybe clear up some of the some of this mountain of uh, of nachos. I'm going to finish yeah. eating it. Yeah, yeah, everything? exactly. Yeah, I mean, watch Dave eat it all. Dave, Dave's, Dave's been. Um, we should have done a before and after picture <laughs> of, Dave, of Dave. Like, put him on a scale before and a scale afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to pause right here, but we'll be right back. All right, we're back once again. We did put another dent in all this food that was in front of us, which, by the way, very, very delicious. I I had to kind of fight Dave off with a stick to get the rest of those nachos because he he was going at them by himself. I allowed it. I I, I think I know what Dave likes on the menu. If we were voting on favorite things, I think the nachos may be on his list. You know, the chips, they're just like nice and well done and crispy. That's how I like chips. So they they slice those potatoes in-house. You yep, actually, we do the um, the potatoes from scratch, the uh, chips, I guess you could call them. Yeah, and crisps. They, we do some uh, <laughs> some sides with some of the sandwiches with them as well. Yeah, you can something about fresh made chips. It's just, I agree. Uh, fresh made chips are awesome. gorgeous. You don't get them as very better than old mass produced. Yeah. So we're going to. I think it would be um, poor form of me not to try the IPA. So this is one of your core beers available. 365 days a year. Well, yeah, pleasure. Pleasure chest is something uh, I've always tried to dial in IPAs. Um, it started a long time ago, but back uh, when I was at Cask and Larder Ravenous Pig days, there was two hops that stood out to me: Citra and Mosaic. That just jumped. They weren't readily available. The I want to say Mosaic was still an experimental uh, number at the time. It's a while uh, ago. <laughs> but, but there was, uh, but that combination just worked for me. So. Um, without saying the other hops that are in there, those are two of them that, that just kind of work in that IPA realm. This is before New England's kicked in, back when everybody wanted a clear beer and didn't like any sort of haze in it. So I've always kind of stuck with that in this beer. It does have, uh, it's uh, made with Maris Otter. There's some um, pale crystal malts in there, a small amount, and some uh, carapils, but that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. There's a little malty sweetness yeah. Uh, mash temperatures on the low side. It, it's just a good style that works. I try not to over bitter it, uh, so you can have more than one. And it, yeah, it's uh, there's not much uh, middle hops. There are some hops in the middle, but most of it's finish. And we dry hop the crap out of it. The accountant hates this beer because it is probably one of the most expensive beers we make, and because there is uh, an inordinate amount of hops in there. It's almost got like a session sort of flavor to it, you know, where it's not like punching in the face too yeah, much. Yeah, it's six, uh, 6.6 ABV, mm-hmm. so it's not over the top. Yeah, uh, yeah. The one I used to make it at about 7.2, and it was good to sip on, but this one you can drink a pint of yeah. and not get hurt. Turd, yeah, totally. It's um, smooth. But it does have, uh, dry hopping wise, it does have a hop variety in there that just it kind of reeks of dankness. And that's, the, I think, the term the kids are using. Um <laughs> today but they it do, does have like that, that. <laughs> that character but you do get the citrusy and the spice and the the complex hop aroma co- complex character where it's it's tough to find the exact hops that are in there and that's what i was kind of after is yeah that it's hoppy but it's not like oh this is all citra but right I, we make other beers that are all citra or whatever hop variety and i love playing with them but with this one i wanted that complexity and that stand out of it to where it's hoppy, but you don't know what the hop yeah, is kind yeah. of thing. But it does have those standard uh, words in there of being uh, citrusy and and piney and resinous and yep. and dank and all those uh, cool words that the kids are using. <laughs> all the buzzwords, dank, dank. It's got a like a creamy mouthfeel to it. Like it, like in the finish, it kind of mellows out mm-hmm. compared to like a. I don't know, typical right. American IPAs yeah, I was that say, you get from a like, lot of Like places. the citra gives you kind of that dank at the very end that, oh, sits, yeah, yeah, that yeah. sits with you for a couple minutes. And this doesn't have this. Like It's, yeah, it's not know, it's sticky. A, and there's so, no, many, no. Uh, so yeah. many on the market that are sticky or have that um, lingering uh, orange marmalade 
coach your palate kind of feel to it. Right. Where this one's hoppy, but it doesn't finish and doesn't stick in a way that makes you kind of wonder, like, what what can I have next? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't want to ruin your taste buds for the next 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, and there's so. certain things we do in the brewery that keep that. The hops are tricky because they're uh, most of the oils are very volatile. And when you abuse them or when you're making the beer itself, uh, you lose those volatiles and... It may, some beers, it may smell great when you pour them and then they disappear. To try to get those volatiles in solution and make them hang on to where as you empty your glass, you still smell them. Yeah. It's always been a challenge for me to try to make a beer that, oh, this is an IPA. Well, I better have hops all the way down to the bottom because if not, you're just, you've just got a pale ale. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a kind of a interesting distinction you have to make because if you want to make a lighter IPA, you don't want it to be confused. With a pale ale. I think you I like nailed it. it, yeah. Yeah, you have to. And uh, it's a shame that the modern, over the past two years or so, the modern, stylistically speaking, modern pale ale, uh, modern IPAs are just, I'm sorry, modern pale ales are what IPAs were three years ago. Yeah. Because nobody was doing that back then. And yeah. now everybody's got a monster truck it <laughs> and, and make it that much bigger and better. So a lot of times you'll have a pale ale nowadays and... That's what IPAs tasted like five years ago. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's good or bad, I don't know. But Well, there's so many sub-styles now with IPAs. It's like 50, there's almost as many IPA styles as there is everything else combined, it seems like. Yeah, nothing like a, what's the, there's a double IPA, a triple IPA, and a quadruple IPA now. Wait, I don't know. Man, I can't make sense of any of that. Is, <laughs> is it an IPA or is it a barley wine? Yeah, I would say yeah at, some, exactly. at, some, at some point, I think it's marketing more than anything else. At that point, it's just so. I know I said the word marketing, and Laura's like, "Yep, I know what that is." <laughs> well, it's funny if you I'm like familiar it. with that term. But beyond that, it's not marketing; it's the style guidelines. I was and just about to say, the, yeah. you know, the U.S. Beer Competition and Great American Beer Festival. There's guidelines and characteristics for a double IPA and a triple IPA and a quadruple IPA. I myself Which, have never had a good for quadruple them, IPA. I you can't. Can, you can download the uh, BJ. You probably have. The, what was the BJCP yeah. guidelines app? It's pretty interesting because they'll they'll give you a breakdown of every single subcategory. But it's funny because if you look at the list of categories now, and you go back in time three years, like you said, before they updated, I think it was a year or two ago, or whatever they they put a bunch of updates in. A lot of these styles, like quadruple IPA and you know New England, they they weren't. People were using the terms here and there, but it wasn't even an official style. It's almost like the dictionary. When somebody says something enough, they're like, okay, well, I guess we'll put it in here and give it a definition. So now all these weird little sub-styles that were kind of just terms people use. But, they're actually but really is official that better? Well, that's did like did we need for shizzle in the dictionary? <laughs> I mean, were, were we better off without it? Are we better with it? I mean, like, really, does that need to be in there? I don't know if a shizzle is or not. Etymology, man. I, I feel like it's one of those things that's <laughs> for in there. Probably for is. better or for worse, it's probably Urban in there. Urban dictionary, maybe. But is a, That's the real dictionary. And right? I guess this is me coming out. Is, is a customer going to come in here just because you say you have a double IPA versus saying you have a triple IPA or vice versa? Or I, it's a tricky thing. You know, what's next year's thing going to be? Crystal what's, ball that and let me know. Because quintuple? I, I mean, where, where are we going here? No, but you're right. You know, I mean, I think like that's why these terms have even come out. You know, it, double IPA, I guess, kind of made some sense. But I think now it's like, oh, I'm going to call my beer triple IPA because if it's standing next to three other IPAs and they're all double or singles, a lot of people are going to be like, I want that one. That one's got a higher number. Yeah. So it must be more, more IPA like. Yeah. So I want that one. This, got, so this really one's got more it is in it. Yeah. What's the biggest multiplier you have? Yeah. I'm going to have a quintuple IPA. And then it's like, is it hop character or alcohol content? I, mean, I don't know. It's, I think it's, it does get confusing. When you, when you figure that out, let me know because I'll, uh, I'll probably ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting to the point that I'm really excited about. I have to kind of preface this for the listeners. At the very beginning of this, before we even started, before actually. we even started, we we got a, a little pour. It's been sitting at you know getting closer to room temperature. I mean, probably close to two hours at this point. It's been sitting there, and because it's good beer, not you know garbage beer, it's going to taste amazing. But we've got the exact same beer. It's the go big. Yeah, go big. And we're going to go big at. And this one's this one's the uh, this is the Elijah go big. the Elijah go big. This, Oh, this both of these. Oh, yep. yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. So, so we're gonna taste this one straight from the tap, and then one that's been hanging around the entire podcast. 
and kind of just totally different. Yeah, drinking see, see what we're doing yep. there. Yep. So I'm gonna go first with the uh, the cool guy. So, so the big difference for me is the warmer one is gonna is gonna throw off those those higher alcohol volatiles that are from the whiskey, and you're gonna pick up those heat and whiskey notes. Sorry, Mike's kegging some beer off, but um, it, it's a real brewery. <laughs> real brewery. And then with the colder one, you're not gonna get as much out of probably opening your Christmas present too early, but. Oh my gosh! But also, what happens with it's cold a, beer, and there's difference. a reason you drink Seven uh, Eleven beers that cold, is with the cold one, as that oh, wow. uh, solution runs across your palate, your taste buds shrink up a little bit, protecting themselves. <laughs> so, uh, and that's something everybody it happens to everybody. So you're not going to taste as much, and that's why those Seven Eleven beers have to be right out of a cooler of ice. If they're any warmer, you're gonna you're gonna taste that Seven Eleven beer, and it's not you a get those great experience. Yeah, but so, but with that colder one, your taste buds are shut down a little bit, and you're not gonna taste as much. Where that warmer yeah. one, you're gonna get a lot more flavor and a lot more character out of it. So much more. Yeah, you nailed yeah. it too. I mean, it's uh, this one reminds me you more get of the, the chocolate, get... and then this one's whiskey. Th- th- yeah, like the, difference. the warmer one, you're gonna get gonna that whiskey note. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's and got like a lighter. It's going to get into your palate a little bit more. The cold one's got like a lighter, you know, softer kind of sweetness. And then you get this warmth from the, well, I mean, it is warmer, but that's not what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? The alcohol. Well, alcohol warmth. warmth. I mean, yeah. it, it's got, it's really brings in that like oaky whiskey flavor. The interesting part is they both have a unique time and place. So. You know, there's some nights you may want that warmer one. Oh, there's yeah. Some, Absolutely. Uh, day drinker style right after dinner kind of thing where you may want that cooler one because it's going to it's gonna offer you a different um, experience, a different flavor characteristic. They Honestly, they taste like two completely – not completely different beers, but they taste like right. two different beers. Yeah. I mean, you know, the other thing from the warm one, you get a, like that dark fruit kind of cherry, you know – you don't get stone it stone fruit style stuff. Yeah, I say, you I don't get say, it nearly as much with the cold. I one. always say prunes, but then people look at me like I'm an idiot. I was like, it, it reminds me of prunes. Just stick with cherry. And like, like why are you saying prunes? I'm like, well, that's what it reminds me. My taste. Okay, you eat the, a lot the, of prunes, Joe. The dude? crystal malts. Uh, no, the, when we use a lot of sweetening malts in that beer, um, like I say, uh, crystal malts and um, and caramels that uh, add that. And if you have them by themselves and almost in our Robinaut Red, you will get a raisin note, especially if you go back to that Robinaut now, if you can remove those hop characteristics out of your palate, but you will get a, a, a real mild raisin note. And those Belgian beers and those German mm. beers, the double box and the, yeah, yeah. the ones that you were talking about before, you do yeah. get a raisin note from those. Yeah, I love that raisiny flavor. I, feel, I get that a lot in uh, um, scotch ales too. Yeah. So you say in prunes, yeah. prunes just a big raisin. So yeah. It, what it, he said. It's subjective. <laughs> Everybody tastes differently. Somebody somebody that eats fast food burgers every day, that's all they know. They they wouldn't know when they had a good hamburger cooked right and right. seasoned right. So once they have that, they're just like, this is this is not a hamburger. This, this is, is wrong. This yeah. is a steak yeah. experience. And but once you expose yourself to those different things and different temperatures and and taste characteristics, you expose your palate to you you, you can evolve those flavors. But if I never ate a prune, you saying it tastes like prunes, I'd be like, well, that's offensive. I don't know what the hell's a prune. What are you talking about? I mean, I, I like to liken, uh, you know, heavy stouts with, like, complex flavors to whiskey. You know, you get, like, kind of a, a similar sort of experience with the two, especially with the alcohol Well, this content. one's actually but, done in well, a whiskey barrel. I mean, so there's a reason that they, that they finish them in whiskey barrels because the flavors complement each other. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you look at these like really smoky scotches and stuff like that, and you listen to, especially people who aren't whiskey drinkers, you ever have you ever had Laphroaig before? You have so uh, it's it's on un- Isley. It's a uh, coastal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, really smoky, really smoky. And they, they have this this marketing thing that they do. Take some no slower. They, <laughs> they so what they do is they 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 have people try this whiskey, the scotch, and they <laughs> they. Uh, they record their reactions to it, and uh, the stuff that they say is so ridiculous. It's like, I feel like I just got kicked in the face by a horse that ran through burning peat moss or something. What? <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because they, it sounds awful, but when you, you know, as somebody who, who enjoys scotch, you're like, wow, that must be pretty hardcore. It must be pretty crazy. That. I really want to try it. 
That and it really is. A, it's an insanely smoky. It's the smokiest thing I've ever had in my life, honestly, the four years. But, uh, you know, those kinds of flavors, they sound terrible on paper, but they're amazing when you develop a palate for those types of things, you know. Stouts have weird flavors to them, but they're, they're awesome. When you and I never develop the developed the smoke flavor. I love it. Smokies. I do like smoked meat. I love smoky I mean, stuff. If, it, if that's the same thing. So I was then. asking about the bacon. <laughs> it's a smoky bacon. <laughs> like, oh, man, where'd you get this? Was this, not, it, it, this, this is some sort of special craft it's bacon? bacon. Yeah, we call it bacon. <laughs> <laughs> it came from a pig. <laughs> some call it swine flesh. Well, we have reached <laughs> great, great way to end the podcast. That's true. <laughs> Let's end with some swine did flesh. You, did you? Were you stationed in Germany? Was it? no. This is a thing about somebody my told me pork in German is Schweinfleisch or something. It like is, that. but but the thing about Germany when I was in the army, so that my first duty station was Korea, and I was like, oh, this is cool being outside the country for the first time. Yeah, yeah. And then I tried, I beg, borrow, whatever, trying to get to Germany. Never happened. I ended up in Central Texas instead of Germany. <laughs> yeah, so so it's I kinda, never got, I never got to go to Germany. So when you're in Iraq, you get a mid tour leave where you, where you get a couple of weeks off. You get to go back to the states, yeah. see your family, all that stuff. I was like, I want to go see them. <laughs> I'm going so, to Germany. Yeah. So my wife was deployed at the same time. We were both in the army. So we just said, let's just go to Germany. It's a much shorter oh, flight. Oh, that's pretty cool. We're gonna do it. You guys both so, took leave at so the same we, time. So we took leave at the same time. We flew to Germany, and they they have a, a really cool military it's for the military folks it's a, a big it's a nice hotel yeah and it's like right there in the alps and so we got to go see it. it was during the summer so i got to see ski lifts in the summer but that's fine because i'm from florida and i don't really care to ski what's yeah, that yeah exactly <laughs> what's, like, that, thing what, right what's there? that white stuff on top of that hill <laughs> it's like oh that's still snow that giant, and garbage, that giant garbage dump <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i never got to go to germany but i was like you know what one way or the other, the army's going to send me to damn Germany. So that's what happened <laughs> so on, on, on my mid tour leave. And you had some Schweinfleisch. And I, I ate a lot. Actually, there's a place called Waffenschmitte, which means weaponsmith. <laughs> and oh, I wow. had a giant ox steak while I was there. Oh, that sounds awesome. And it was really good. But they, the cool place, they had uh, they, people put money on the wall. And like would sign it and date it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I, for some reason, because because uh, Korea was my first duty station, I had some Korean money. So me, my wife, and we had two friends that were there. We all signed it and we all, and we all put it up there. So this is like in 2006. So I kind of want to. It's still open. The place is still open. I kind of want to go back there, like you know, 13, 14 years later now, and go look at it and be like, oh my god, there's our money that <laughs> we signed. Spot, yeah. Yeah. They so, cashed it in. Yeah. They cashed it in. <laughs> it's like, well, I think it was like. I don't know, a thousand won at the time. It took it's like the twenty five cents. Yeah, at the time it took thirteen hundred won to make a dollar. So I don't know what the exchange rate is today. So a thousand won probably not seventy five cents. So whatever. They put seventy five <laughs> cents on a bill. Well, I just wanna say thanks a lot, guys. I'm glad you had us over. And if you are ever in the Titusville area, please, please come check these guys out. Both both locations. Yeah, both locations right here. Uh, at, at the bricks, at the, do you just call the other one the, the, hard, the hardware, hardware store? Yeah, we just so call it, it's a, probably an internal name, but it's Playland Brewing Company Hardware Store. I've, I've yeah. heard people call it that out, outside, no. yeah, the, hard, the hardware store, and then this is the bricks project. Come on by. Great food. The food is, uh, well, yeah, you know what? Let, let Dave tell you about the food because he's the one who fantastic. ate it all. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I, just for people who have kids, you know, I took my kid to the, uh, the hardware store location and they've got, sodas that they make and stuff like that you guys make anything besides the root beer it was root beer when i went uh, root beer is the only one we really folk we've done some other sodas to experiment but root beer was on at both locations but it was fun because you know my you know my my kids are growing up in an environment where their parents drink a lot of beer so they got to kind of sit there lot, next yeah. to us with a, their own little mug of root beer and it was it was super fun it was really cool and the place is awesome too. there's a little something for everybody a little something for everybody absolutely and if there's not anything for you you're probably a terrible person it, it, it's not it, it's not them it's you something's wrong with you all right well thanks a lot guys well, it's been you. awesome yeah. thanks for the food thanks for the beer thanks for the talking to talking to no that sounds like i'm in trouble the I'll talk it, yeah. the talking yeah. Good enough. Well, thanks for paying your tab thanks joe uh, thanks. Uh, not, not dave this is all on joe all day I, I bought the equipment not it. <laughs> dang it not it that's legally binding so, all right and uh <laughs> if it wasn't for beer you wouldn't be here
This has been a Getting to Know Brews presentation.